You know, Leech Lake is a real, such a world famous fishery for walleyes, perch, muskies, and even more recently, there's a really sort of a burgeoning population of smallmouth bass. But one thing that it's really big is ice fishing and ice fishing specifically for perch. Look at that, sight fishing perch. It's just awesome when they're on. What do you think about that perch there? <laughs> That's a Leech Lake special there, boy. Ooh, oh, there's one. <laughs> Another magnum. We're right now out on the south end of the lake, and uh, Jeremy and I, Jeremy's wandering around here somewhere close by, but we're sort of cruising around on these flats, these chara flats, which are like uh, shallow sand grass and peat flats that these fish sort of rove on. And it's uh, the whole key is finding them. They're massive flats. I mean, these flats are literally miles of water that you can cover. And the whole key is finding the bigger, fish. The interesting thing is out here, there's fish everywhere. Almost every hole you cut, there's going to be perch coming up the hole. Not giant, but better. And then every once in a while you get on some jumbolinis. And the whole key is figuring out where the big ones are at. But you do have to spend some amount of time to find the bigger fish. But all of a sudden you'll pull up on a spot and there'll be a bunch of great big ones. Landed on the school of decent ones here. Not gigantic, but nice. Just caught one a little bit bigger than this and I let it go. And my partner in crime over there really let me have it. Perch happened to be his favorite fish to eat. So this one might have to go on the ice for him. It's been a kind of a tough day. And perch can be fish that you can catch throughout the day, of course, but it definitely pays to move around. And, and you know, perch being a fish of flats, Moves can be from here, you know, from me to James away, but really a lot of times on these flats that are eight, nine, ten feet where it's really gradual tapers, we'll move. You know, I, I was three miles up that way, James was three miles this way, and we both started just kind of cutting holes and we landed on an area where he caught a nice one. They are possibly my favorite species of fish to eat in fresh water, actually, in fresh or salt water. And then we were doing these little like 100 yard jumps and now we kind of tighten it down into moving every 20 yards or so. So when it gets to be the middle of the day like this, you really want to move around. Mark, where, even if you just catch one of them, pay attention to where that was, kind of try to fine tune that area and then hopefully you get better conditions and you can land on uh, a really active school when it gets toward that magic, magic window in the evening. Ooh, he likes so he likes the look of it. Ooh, yeah, look at that. He's gonna come in and crush it. Crunch. There we go. Crunch. Ooh, guap perch. Not a biggie, but he is just about of an, an edible model. Actually, I think I'm gonna keep that for Rascal. Oh yeah, that's what we're after. That's more like it. One thing about perch fishing too, or you know, this could be the same with sunfish or crappies, is that when you're fishing around a lot of fish, meaning there might be, you know, in this hole, there might be a dozen fish in this area around me, and it, it becomes really important to learn how to read your fish finder and identifying what is a good fish and what are some of the smaller fish and when you're, you're you're getting pecked a lot by smaller fish too you don't want to be setting the hook on every fish that bites you want to know when it's a good fish know when it's the right time to set like right there I just got bit by a smaller perch and I could see that the signature wasn't that big and the rods went did it did it did it it's not worth me setting the hook hooking that fish taking the time to unhook it when I know that there's more big ones down there. So right now I know if it's a big fish if I've got a really strong, almost maroon return. So I'll, I'll see kind of the, the big group of fish. There's a decent one down there and then, um, it's not as big as I thought. But if there's a lot of, like what I mean gaps, if you see a bunch of gaps in between the, the marks, you know that they're smaller fish, but if you see that single thick return without any gaps in it, you can identify that, okay, there's a bigger fish or it's just a stronger signal within the group, you know that it's a, a larger larger perch and those are the ones you want to be targeting. Today, they need bait on the jig and wrap. 
if I don't have a piece of meat on there, they're just completely denying me. So I'm gonna put another chunk of minnow on and hopefully get some more. Everybody throws the minnow tails away, and that happens to be my favorite part of the minnow to use for bait. I love minnow tails way more than I like heads, and the simple reason that they stay on the hook a lot better. These fine wire hooks don't have a lot of barb to them, so it's pretty easy for it to slide off, and that minnow tail meat seems to stick on that little barb to me a little bit, a little bit better. Boom, there we go. Secret weapon. Here's a, here comes a big, big, big one right now. Ooh, there's a biggie right there. There's a big one. There's a big one. There. Ooh, that's a little bit better one. There you go. Not too bad. That's a real perch. Right there. Come here, buddy. Ooh. Real aggressive. I'm mean, actually using right now just an EMC uh, rattle spoon. Pretty good sized bait, almost a walleye sized bait, but the, the thing is what I'm trying to do is selectively uh, target the biggest perch that are in these little packs so that bigger profile bait seems to work better. But what I've been doing is I us usually either tip a couple of waxies or a minnow head. No, right on the bubble perch. Well, I guess you're always learning something. The one thing that we definitely learned today is Moving pays off. You definitely got to be on the move, and you got to be patient. And we got You got to sort through sort through fish. You know, lakes like Leech. This lake still has tremendous numbers of big perch in it. And some years, you come out here, and it's just like every one of them is a jumbo. You can't believe it. It's just one after the other. But I'll tell you one thing: there are a lot of up and coming perch in this fishery too. It's absolutely amazing. We've got a Yeti fish house set up over there, it's pretty cool. We've got the mega live on the big screen. We've got a camera down there. And the thing is just absolutely stuffed full of perch. There's like 20 on the screen at, at all times. So it's pretty cool to see how many fish are really in the, in the system. It's absolutely full of fish right now. Yeah, there you oh, go. Oh, nice one, huh? Sort of intriguing the way we're catching them. You know, like last year we were up here, we got on these just big mega schools, the great big ones. But today we've been sort of wor working around, just getting one or two nice ones out of a given spot, and then we have to move again, and then we'll get, we'll get one or two, we'll catch some number of small ones. But we're not getting on one spot where they're all big. But the thing is, is they're they're tallying up right they now. Are, Believe yeah. it or not, when you look at the sled over here, <laughs> my wife will be pleasantly surprised when we get home. I assure you that. <laughs> you know.